After sitting on the sidelines for a while listening and watching the goings on in this country, I've come to one conclusion. A conclusion that will not sit very well with most of you. A conclusion that made me actually sit back in my chair and have a bit of a chuckle to myself. Not because I thought it was funny in any way. Not because I thought it was ironic either. Have you ever battled with some kind of problem that you just can't see a solution for? You might have been battling with it for days or weeks or even months and simply could not come up with a solution. And then one day someone who you least expect comes along and takes one look and gives you the perfect solution to the problem. It's moments like this where you just have to sit back and have a chuckle at the absolute ridiculousness of what just happened. This is exactly what happened to me. So what was this conclusion that hit me like a ton of bricks? That made me sit back in my chair and chuckle at the ridiculousness of the situation. The conclusion I came to was that we, the white minority, have to be, on average of course, the biggest collection of fools I have ever seen or heard of, ever. Let me explain how I come to this conclusion. As I've mentioned once or twice in the past, I live in a suburb that is pretty old and well established. The average age of the people living here are what I would call seniors in society. That is people over the age of 60 or so, many of them being much older than that. I'm friendly with a lot of them and we talk often. One thing is glaringly clear to me. These people have no idea what is happening around them. They don't have a clue. As with most neighborhoods these days, we have our own WhatsApp groups. One for security related issues and one for general matters. Now for those of you who are also members of similar groups, you will identify with what I'm about to tell you. In every group like this, especially where elderly people are concerned, there is always one member who stands out. They are always the first to post the latest news. They are the first to post the link to the recording of the presidents addressing the nation on the COVID situation. They are always the first to post a link to the government gazette articles to show us the latest laws that we absolutely have to follow, etc, etc. I refer to these individuals as the mayors of the suburbs. Some of them consider themselves to be self-appointed leaders in these groups. Anyway, we have one such member in our WhatsApp group. And this individual keeps posting regular updates. But what I've noticed is how the rest of the community accept these continuously oppressive regulations. The people in my neighborhood accept these regulations without question and they obey them like a bunch of kindergarten kids on the first day of school. Most of these people have no idea that their pensions are about to be taken away from them or that they stand a chance of losing their homes and potentially everything else when this ridiculous expropriation without compensation takes place. The levels of ignorance to the realities around them is staggering. These are good people. They work hard. They have children and grandchildren who they love very much, but for some reason they are still of the opinion that the government will take care of them, that the government knows what is best and is doing what is best for them. One elderly guy I am friendly with and often help with electrical issues with his pool, etc., even talks about President Ramaphosa in private conversation. He religiously listens to every address Ramaphosa the idiot makes and adjusts his life accordingly. He even wears his stupid mask when I visit his house to work on his pool electrics. This is where our problem lies. This is where I suddenly came to the conclusion that we, the white minority, must be on average the biggest bunch of fools on earth. Let me explain. The average white South African is being bombarded every single day with a continuous onslaught of attacks on every single part of our lives. From being told we are going to be cooked like frogs in a pot, to how we will have our property taken away from us, to how we may not take part in the economy, how we will have our pensions taken away from us, basically how we are going to lose everything we have and be reduced to poverty and eventually to extinction. We face these threats every day and are also given proof every single day that these are not merely idle threats. These threats come in many forms. One of these threats is the physical threat. We physically get attacked every single day. Just look at the farm attacks taking place these days. It comes in the form of home invasions right in our suburbs where some of the most horrendous examples of physical violence and torture occur. Just today, the house three doors down from me was hit in a home invasion by four bastards who scaled the wall and locked the occupants in one room while they ransacked the house. Right here, three houses down from me. It comes in the form of financial attacks where we are being forced out of the economy and the job market by regulations such as BEE and triple BEE. Yet, at the same time, we are told that we are not cooperating 
and therefore need to pay more towards reparations and infrastructure development, etc., etc., when in fact everyone knows that it is to line the pockets of these thieving idiots. Yes, when our taxes go up, we just pay. When we are told that we can't have a job simply because we are white, we do nothing. When we are faced with legislation shoved through Parliament with no regard to its consequences, legislation that will directly negatively affect us whites, we do nothing. I could go on and on, but I, get, I think you get the point. We are a bunch of fools. We are the frogs being boiled alive. We are the sheep being led to slaughter. We will soon be the dispossessed. We will soon be reduced to poverty, even more than we are now. But still, we do nothing. Remember, I speak of us as a whole, and on average. There are always exceptions, but as always, the exceptions to the rule are always just a small portion of the whole. Do you remember a while ago I did one or two recordings on large companies that blatantly and publicly discriminate against us white minorities, or and other minorities for that matter? One of them was Discovery. At the time, I vowed I would never again support them, and I haven't. How many of you actually went and cancelled your Discovery Medical Aid? Or was it too much trouble to do so? I wonder what your excuse will be if asked for a reason. How many of you actually went out and cancelled your DSTV subscription after vowing to? And now we are faced with the latest and most blatant onslaught on the whites, not only here in South Africa, but worldwide. Coca-Cola is now forcing its employees to undergo a course on, and I quote, how to be less white, close quotes. At first I thought it was a joke, but to my disbelief I found that it was perfectly legitimate. I vow that I will now never ever buy another Coca-Cola product ever, ever again. How about you? Have you got any idea how many other brand names are owned by Coca-Cola? Just in the refreshment industry, Coca-Cola owns Sprite, Fanta, Schweppes, Appetizer, Fresca and a host more. In fact, they own over 500 more. I have vowed that from now on I will read the label of every product I buy and if I see the name Coca-Cola on the label, I will not buy it. This is the only way we are going to make our presence felt anywhere. Leave those products on the shelves to rot. Cancel the subscriptions to services offered by companies that openly and blatantly discriminate against us. At the same time, I would like to ask you, my subscribers, to make the pledge with me, to post your pledge in the comment section that you will never again support any of these companies that are blatantly discriminating against us locally and internationally. It doesn't matter if you love your brandy and coke or your rum and coke. Whatever it is, there are alternatives. I have never been a fizzy drink drinker, so I have never bothered with the likes of coke, etc. But if I have a drink, I really do enjoy brandy and coke. But Checkers has an alternative that I think is even better tasting than coke in my opinion. Zip. Zip costs a fraction of what Coke costs too, so you win anyway. My point is that we have to, at some point, stop feeding the beast that will eventually eat us. That ultimately includes taxes, rates where services are not being rendered, etc. etc. We have to put our foot down at some point and make a stand. We as the white minority can simply not afford to keep being the fools we clearly are at the moment. Please like and share this on as many social media platforms as possible. It's the only way my message gets out there. If you have not subscribed to my channel yet, do it now. If you would like to support my channel, in the description I have provided ways in which both local as well as international viewers can make a contribution. If you would like to make a crypto contribution, also in the description field I have provided a Bitcoin as well as an Ethereum wallet address. If you would like to contribute any other cryptos, simply send an email to the address in the description field and I will supply you with a relevant wallet address. If you are comfortable using Zappa, simply pause this video whenever you see the Zappa sign. Any and all contributions are welcome and very much appreciated. To all the amazing people that do support my channel, I say a huge thank you. It is very much appreciated. Until next time, be safe out there.